राधे राधे हरिवान सो जय राधे से कैन स्टे ऑन नेक्स्ट थर्टी मिनट्स एज वी विल रीड फ्रॉम सेंट्स ऑफ बंगाल आवर न्यू स्टोरी अबाउट श्री गोविंद दास बाबा जी फ्रॉम पुरी एंड एंड आल्सो नाउ ही वाज आल्सो इन नाउ अदिप Govinda Das Babaji's earlier name was Gora Charana Chakravarti. He was born in a village near Dalala Bazar in district Nayakhali. His parents died at an early age. There was no one to support him. But the people of Dalal Bajar were impressed by his natural qualities of head and heart. They began to look after him and bring him up as a good Vaishnava. After some time he set out for pilgrimage on foot so he was walking and on the way he ate whatever he got in bhiksha or in when he was in begging yeah like or if he didn't get anything he was fasting and was sleeping under the trees while in the south he was inspired by some in, invisible power to return to puri to jagannath puri when he reached puri he had the good fortune of seeing radharaman charan das deva performing kirtana with his party near simhat uh, simhadwar he felt attracted towards him as he never felt attracted towards anyone before he fell at his feet and surrendered himself to him completely radharaman baba accepted him as his disciple and gave him mantra both were tied by bond of love together forever gorachanana could not live without radharaman even for a second he served him day and night with his body mind and soul by constant service he so identified himself with him that he could read his mind and know what kind of service he would need and when and when and started preparing himself and making necessary arrangements for the same service even before he asked him to do so once radharaman baba mahashaya asked him to go and take vesh baba ji vesh from the mahanta of narayan chat gorachana took vesh he was given the name shri govinda das mahanta ji shri govinda das sorry mahanta ji asked him to remain with radharaman and be blessed by rendering loving service to him Govinda Das remained in the service of Shri Radha Raman Charan Das Deva. Radha Raman Baba entrusted him with the service of collecting food grains for the ashrama by begging. So he went from door to door and collected bhiksha or alms. But he did not himself take food in the ashrama 
he lived on whatever stuff was distributed to beggars by uh, Kshetra, or the place where foodstuffs, which is generally of a very poor quality, is distributed to the beggars. So he was there taking his food. In the ashrama, on special occasions, delicious food of various kinds was prepared, and thousands of people, both invited and uninvited, ate to their heart's content. Even on such occasions, Govinda Das did not eat in the ashram. He took only a small particle of something out of respect for Prashad. His god brothers in the ashram sometimes made great fun of him. They poured on him kir or sauce. The remnants of the banquet of the meal on such occasions and, and said, You may keep away from Mahaprasad, but how can Mahaprasad keep away from you? It will chase and hug you like this. After pouring the prasad over his body, they ate it as his maha prasad. Frolic some Govinda added to the fun by rebuking them for their imper imper impertinence in jest. So he was like joking with them. Apart from doing bhiksha for the ashrama, Govinda Das used to be in the forefront in every activity of the ashrama. He was like Navadvip Das, the chief assistant of Radharaman. Both were his two hands, both were free and informal in their loving attitude and behavior towards him. One day, Radharaman Maharaj called Navadvip early in the morning and said, Look, both you and Govinda go for Bhiksha to every nook and corner of Puri and deliver to me whatever you get in Bhiksha, in begging. Both went to every lane and by lane of Puri for begging every day and gave Radharaman whatever they got in begging on their return to the ashram. One day, as soon as they returned, to the ashrama. Chanting the name, Govinda Das delivered to Radharaman the bag containing arms along with a volley of abuses. So he was ab sent, uh, telling him many abuseful things. This, I think, we read one time in one other story that this happened, but now it's from the point of view of Govinda Das Babaji. So the devotees in Ashram stood amazed to hear this, hear him. Radharaman Baba also looked at him with surprise. But he made obeisance to Baba and went and sat in the dining room. Baba went to him and said in a soft tone, Govinda, have you gone mad? Why? What has happened? said Govinda. Why did you abuse me with, uh, while delivering the bag of alms? Abuses? I did not give any abuse. I got abuses in alms. You had, you had asked me to deliver to you whatever I got in alms. I gave you the rice and pulses how could I keep the abuses with me? Could I digest them? 
If I did, they could have generated hatred in my head against the person who gave them. Therefore, I deliver them to you along with alms. And everyone was laughing. Baba was happy to hear this. He embraced Govinda heartily and said with a voice choked with emotion, Govinda, I am sold out to you on account of your innocent, artless and loving behavior. Baba always encouraged Govinda's Sakya Bhava, free and friendly attitude towards him. But when, necess when necessary for his spiritual well-being, he did not refrain from being harsh to him. Once Baba Mahashaya had gone to Kendrapada near Katak with Govinda and others, Babaji Mahashaya was staying in the office of Shyama Sundar Babu, while his followers were staying in his house. One morning, he was looking very gray. At about seven o'clock, he wrote a letter to Govinda Dada and sent it to him through a boy. The letter was as follows. Dear Govinda, as soon as you receive this letter, go on foot to Vrindavana, live in Radakund on Madukari, whatever you get in begging, and sweep Radakunda every day. No more meeting with me at present. We shall meet later at some other place, as Nitai Chan has built. Vaishnava Das Anudas, or servant of the servants of Vaishnavas, Radha Raman Charandas. So the letter came to Govinda Dada and others as a thunderbolt. Everyone said, How and for what reason Babaji Mahashaya, who is ever so kind, has suddenly become so harsh or hard? After a little while, however, Govinda Dada said slowly and coolly to the boy who had brought the letter. I shall comply. Let him be happy. Convey my dandavat to him. The boy returned and conveyed this to Baba Mahashaya. He remained quiet and grave as before. His attendant disciples also did not have the courage to speak to him. After a short while came Nitya Swarup Brahmachari, and he said, If you kindly permit, I may also go to Vrindavana with Govinda Dada. And Babaji told him, you can certainly go. I have no objection. Nitya Swaro, if Govinda Dada comes and performs Dandavat to you, sorry, Nitya, Nitya Swaro says, if Govinda Dada comes and performs Dandavat to you before leaving, can he go come? Babaji said, no. Mind your own business, let alone others. But Nitya Swarup could not say anything further. He went back with tears in his eyes and told Govinda Dada everything. Then came two other disciples, Shyamanad Das and Nitai Das, and asked for permission to go with Govinda Dada. Baba Mahashaya permitted them as well. Shyama Sundar Babu and others were standing before Baba Mahashaya and watching everything like wooden dolls without saying anything. 
Govinda Dada, Nitya Svaro Pramachari, Shyamananda Dada, and Nitai Das could wait no longer. They started to for Vrindavana singing. Bajo Nitai Gaur Radhe Shyam, Japa Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. So they were singing and tears were constantly flowing from their eyes. Those who saw them going were also weeping. The whole atmosphere was ch charged with lamentation. Only Babaji Mahashaya was sitting calm and quiet, like one totally undisturbed and unconcerned. At this time, Shyama Sundar Babu came. Deeply aggrieved and agitated, he lay prostrate before Baba Mahashaya and said in a voice trembling with fear, I have a request. I want to give the four persons going to Vrindavana some money for the journey. You should not object. What objections can I have? said Baba Mahashaya. If they accept, you can give. So Shyama Sundar Babu went and sent to, said to Govinda, uh, Govinda Dada, Govinda Dada, I have brought some money for your journey. Please accept. I have asked Baba Mahashaya also. He has no objection. Govinda Dada said, Oh, I see. My examination is not yet over. And he quickened his pace towards Vrindavana. Didn't accept. <laughs> so Shyama Sundar Babu returned, disappointed. He told Baba Mahashaya that Govinda Dada refused to accept anything. And Baba Mahashaya was pleased to hear this. There was now a change in him. With tears in his eyes, he asked, has Govinda really gone? Yes, said Shyama Sundar. You sent him. I can still send someone to get them back if you want. No, no, don't do that. They are going to Vrindavana. You must not obstruct, replied Baba Mahashaya. He was again in tears as he said this. Lalita Dasi had so far been looking for the right moment to say what she felt she must. She now came forward and said, We never knew that you could be so hard, hard hearted. You did not even allow Govinda Dada to come and make Dandavat to you before leaving. Now, why shed crocodile tears? And Babaji said, you people do not know. Good times are ahead for Govinda. By the grace of Nitai Chan, he is going to Vrindavana, and he will make good progress. Nitai Chan is never hard on anyone. Then Lalita said, we, the Jivas of Kali, are too weak and imbecile. How can we, in moments of adversity, reconcile ourselves with it, uh, we reconcile ourse ourselves with it under the belief that it would be the, the harboring, harbor you, oh my God, one second. <clears throat> How can we, in moments of adversity, reconcile ourselves with it under the belief that it would be the harbinger of happiness, meaning Nitai Chant, that all will be okay, that Nitai Chant is never hard on anyone? So Baba Jinan said, when Nitai Chant wants to shower his mercy upon anyone, he has also to prepare him for it. He is not ignorant like you. He is omniscient. He knows your weaknesses and shortcomings. 
he also knows how to remove remove them and does whatever is necessary towards that end. And then Lalita said, maybe, still I would like to know for what fault of his you gave Govinda this punishment. Then Babaji said, do you think that going to Vrindavana, living in Radha Kunda are punishment? There are many Mahatmas who covet that kind of punishment. Then Govinda Das reached Rindavana. After seeing the, ta the Takuras of Rindavana and doing the Parikrama of Govardhan, he went to Radhakund. He lived there for six years and regularly did the service of sweeping around the Kunda. He did not go anywhere even for a single day. If ever he went to Vrindavana, he returned the same day, so that his service of Radha Kunda was not neglected. During this period, he made much progress, and the spiritual wealth he attained made him often shed tears in remembrance of the causeless mercy of Baba Mahasharan. After six years, when Baba Mahashaya went to Vrindavana, he asked Govinda to go to Nilachal, and from Nilachal, he went to Navadvip with Baba Mahashaya. But Baba Mahashaya suddenly disappeared. He could not bear his separation. Life became difficult for him, for Govinda Baba. Then one day Babaji Mahashaya appeared to him in a dream and asked him to go to Puri and look after the Haridas Thakur Mat. At that time, the condition of the Mat was so deplorable, so bad, that it was about to be sold to a Christian priest. Govinda Das served the mat with all his heart and soul for 22 years. Then he went to Navadvip and in 1930 he left his body to meet Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva in Celestial Vrindavan. Nice story. It's very interesting. I, I was smiling when I was reading one part, how yesterday uh, I was uh, walking in Zagreb uh, with Andaka, our Andaka son. <laughs> so I was walking with him and we were talking about many things, but one, one of our part of conversation was how many things happened in our lives and how those things even in that moment looked bad, like some punishment, were so much important that without those bad things, we wouldn't be here today where we are now. And here nicely he was uh, talking uh, to the story about how Nitai works. You know, sometimes that we get the mercy Nitai prepares us that we can receive. And sometimes this can look difficult, challenging, but this is our preparation that we accept that Kripa. And one more interesting thing that we were talking, as you know, we are Kripa Siddhas. And Somebody will say, oh, but you need to be qualified. But what is our qualification? Our qualification is that we can accept that Kripa. And how we get this qualification? Again, by Kripa. So we get Kripa, qualification, that we can accept Kripa. So this is the beauty of Kripa. <laughs> Kripa prepares us to receive more Kripa. So, 
this is so beautiful. So this was our short time that we had today. Anybody wants to add something maybe to the story? Radhe Radhe. <laughs> I just want to say that it was a very beautiful, very beautiful and deep point that you just uh, shared with us that you gave that I have also experienced in my life many times that uh, things that look so bad in the beginning, then after some time, they have been a blessing in disguise, like a hidden gem. But because I am very small and I have not the all big picture, then I uh, I don't get it. You know, it's not so easy to to have the strong faith, a hundred eight percent all the time, right? But Nitai is so merciful that uh, he knows and he is preparing us. And so these uh, exchanges like you had with Andaka is a very valuable, no? To share among, with friends and to give each other this confirmation, this hope and this love. So thank you very much. And I like this backdrop, what you have. It looks so sweet. Is that a new painting of uh, Mahabharata? No, no. no uh, <laughs> you know, we live in modern times. So today, AI can do many things, artificial yeah. intelligence. So I just explained to AI about Radhika and Manjari speaking flowers, you know? And <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and we can, they can be spiritualized <laughs> of course it's a tool it's only a tool point is what we put behind that tool yeah so <laughs> so thank you thank Inadaya. you Mahabhav. thank you and my big hug to Mahabhav also thank you thank you thank you Radhe Radhe Goramrita Radhe Radhe and Guru Dev, if you can hear me, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, um, the Mataji want to share oh, no. something. You want to share? Huh? <laughs> so, here, you know. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. It's on. Okay, Radhe Sundari, Didi. Oh, I just want to, I love that story. Radhe Radhe. I love the message. Radha. I love the message. It was, 